Hello and welcome to JXJ Aviation. This video is part of my discussion on the landing gear system. In this video, we will look at an aircraft's movement on the ground. These ground movements will include pushback, taxi, takeoff roll, and landing roll. First, we will look at pushback. Pushback is the procedure in which an aircraft is reversed or pushed backwards from an airport gate. Although most of the commercial jet aircrafts are fitted with thrust reversers, they cannot be used for reversing the aircraft, but they can be only used for reducing the speed of the aircraft. An exception to this would be some turboprop aircrafts in which the blade angles can be adjusted to push the aircraft backward. This requires specific approvals and a lot of care must be taken by the cockpit crew and it consumes a lot of fuel. So the best solution for an aircraft pushback is using a pushback truck or a pushback tractor. Let's look at the pushback procedure in more detail. The pushback trucks can be broadly classified into two types. Trucks with tow bar and tow barless trucks. The trucks with tow bar can be used on specific aircraft types only. But the tow barless truck can be used on any aircraft type. In the trucks with tow bar, the tow bar is connected to the nose wheel. In the tow barless trucks, the entire nose wheel assembly is lifted up. Before the pushback commences, the cockpit crew is responsible for obtaining the required clearances from the ground control of the ATC. After obtaining the clearance, the cockpit crew informs the ground personnel that pushback can be initiated and the ground personnel informs the crew to release the parking brake of the aircraft. The ground personnel such as the person driving the pushback truck and other personnel around the aircraft, called as wing walkers, are responsible for the external safety of the aircraft and they should avoid collisions with other vehicles or other aircrafts. Before pushback, two-way communication has to be established between the cockpit crew and the ground personnel to inform any emergencies which require the pushback to be stopped. During pushback, one of the aircraft engines may also be started after getting the required clearances. Now we will look at an aircraft taxi. Taxiing an aircraft refers to the movement of an aircraft on a taxiway using its own engine power. This could start after pushback to reach the runway for takeoff or a different parking area. Or it could start after landing to reach an airport gate or a specific parking area. During taxi, the nose wheel is used to maneuver the aircraft. If we consider some small aircrafts as shown here, the nose wheel is directly connected to the rudder pedals in the cockpit. This is a direct mechanical link that uses push-pull rods and cables since the aircraft weight is less and not much force is required to turn the nose landing gear. At low speeds on the ground, the rudder will not be effective and it cannot be used to change the aircraft's direction. On bigger commercial aircrafts, since the weight is more, the hydraulic system on the aircraft provides hydraulic pressure to turn the nose landing gear. This is called as the nose wheel steering system. The nose wheel steering is controlled from the cockpit by a hand wheel or a tiller, 
which could be located on the captain's side or on both the captain and the first officer's side. The nose wheel may also be connected to the rudder pedals. The only difference is that the nose wheel steering angle when using the rudder pedals is lesser. Let's look at some other techniques that can be used during taxiing. During certain ground maneuvers, differential thrust can also be used by increasing the thrust only on one engine. Differential braking, which is brake application on only one main landing gear, can also be used. Generally, the taxi speeds are quite low, so that the aircraft can be stopped immediately if required. The taxi speeds are usually between 20 to 30 knots and may increase or decrease depending on the airport of operation. The ATC ground control is responsible to give clear instructions for taxing the aircraft and the path that needs to be followed. It is the responsibility of the cockpit crew to ensure that they understand the instructions that were given to them. The crew must also ensure that they follow the taxiway center line so that the aircraft can taxi safely. On bigger aircraft, when the crew is at their designated seats, the center line should seem to be passing directly beneath them and the aircraft has to be maneuvered according to this. The crew is also responsible to follow the taxi path that is assigned to them with the help of taxiway markings located on the side of the taxiway. Now we will look at the takeoff rule. This is also called as the ground rule and is the movement of an aircraft on the runway just before takeoff. By definition, takeoff roll is part of the takeoff procedure in which the aircraft is accelerated from standstill to a speed at which the aircraft becomes airborne. The takeoff roll begins when the takeoff thrust is applied on the engines. Next we will look at the landing roll, which is also the aircraft's movement on the runway. This is defined as the movement of an aircraft during landing from touchdown till the aircraft stops completely or reaches its safe taxi speed. During this roll, the brakes, the thrust reversers and the spoilers are used to reduce the aircraft's speed. That's all for my discussion on the ground movement of an aircraft. Thank you for watching and if you liked the video, do subscribe for more videos. And you can continue watching some of my other videos.